Black holes can survive or should survive these bounces. So, uh, so the bounces occur in regions of space where the amount of matter and radiation and energy is diluted. Uh, um, as the universe is contracting, there's less and less matter and radiation um, in each volume of space, except where there's very high concentrations, concentrations high enough to, that the matter can hold itself together. And a black hole is a dramatic example of that. That's a place in which the gravity is so strong that even though the space around it may be expanding, the black hole remains intact. So a black hole would survive a bounce. Uh, it, would, it would just go right through the bounce. And uh, after the bounce, when more matter and radiation is created, it would accrete or gravitate to itself, within itself, more and more of the matter that's, um, that was uh, produced at the bounce, which means the black hole grows during that period. Then, as the universe begins to empty out of its matter and radiation, the black hole decays a bit. It emits through a quantum effect known as Hawking radiation. It loses some of its mass. But overall, over the course of a cycle, it gains more mass at the beginning of a bounce than it does lose mass during the process of Hawking radiation afterwards. So such black holes, over time, will grow bigger and bigger in size, by a little bit, by a small amount, from cycle to cycle. Now, the other thing that's happening with the black holes is that they're being spread out more and more from one another. Because during the course of a cycle, uh, on average, there's an overall stretching effect of the universe. There's a period of stretching, followed by a period of contraction. But the stretching is more than the contraction. So overall, if you have two black holes, um, which are a certain distance apart within a given cycle, by the end of that cycle, they're exponentially far apart from one another. And in future cycles, they get further apart from one another. And um, so the number of black holes we can actually observe within our own, the part of space we can observe, uh, are only black holes that were produced since the last bounce. We can't see these older black holes. They've been spread out too far from one another uh, for us to see them. They're beyond the range in which we can observe light in black holes and galaxies. We only see the black holes that were produced since the last bounce by the usual formation that we think of of stars exploding and leaving behind black holes. But out there, according to the cyclic picture, if you were able to travel far enough at speeds exceeding the speed of light in the right directions, you would run into some of these ancient black holes that have survived one or thousands or perhaps even an eternity of bounces.